I would question your sanity yeah. <laughs> coming here. Why are you putting yourself up to this? John McNurtney is an American that was faced with the option and opportunity to move to Portugal. And that was a bit of a contentious topic with my wife. His wife had been offered a job in Lisbon and she took the kids to get them enrolled in school in Portugal. He stayed back with doubts about making his job as a top financial advisor portable. No, does my job yeah. look like portable? Right. Remember, there was a bunch of jobs right. that were not portable at all. Over the course of four years, he's taken his professional expertise and personal experience on board to share some wonderful advice to those wanting to move here. In a bigger picture, I guess, like optionality is, is always kind of in my mind. Give yourself a wider range of options mm. if you can. Not everything has been rosy. Do you think the politicians um, have a story to tell? Sure. That they're, they're telling? As always. As always. As always. And sometimes the stories don't quite play out the way that they want them to. What has John done to adapt to his new environment? I'm trying to integrate so that I can like not be that ugly American and I want yeah. to be able to interface without worrying. John, really looking forward to diving into how you moved to Portugal, why you chose Lisbon, and how you're adapting to life here. So what was going on in the U.S. at the time when you decided to make your move? Yeah, I mean, Portugal was never on the map. I, I didn't assume that I was going to be coming here. Uh, it was 2019, and I was living in San Francisco, California. And I can't forget the day that I was at a deli uh, ordering a sandwich, and Gavin Newsom was on the television. And he said, all right, folks, this is the situation. We're, we're going to be wearing masks. We're going to be doing uh, uh, an enforced lockdown. And I just thought, is this f for real? Like, we're just going to all just kind of stop? Interesting. And, uh, you know, didn't know what to make of it. But, but then um, my wife had been here already. Okay. And so I was in San Francisco living by myself, which was supposed to be for a very short time. Mm. And then, no, because the pandemic made me think, well, you know, if everything locks down then I might be prohibited from leaving the country, which was indeed the case. So yeah. I went and got a ticket, and whew, I barely made it here. Okay. Yeah, I barely made it here. The border control uh, in Holland was all set to send me home. Yeah. And I said, no, I brought every piece of paper <laughs> that could document <laughs> us on, on the planet. And so I made my way here, and the rest is history. So you didn't travel alone. You, you you still traveled with the family. Like they were already in Portugal, or what was that? What was that like? What was the situation? Well, I won't get into the whole thing. But my wife had been offered a job with what was at the very time uh, at, th at that time it was a generous package to come and open up a a remote office for a tech company. Got it. And she was supposed to be here just for one year. Got it. Right. Okay. And so I. We sort of went into that thinking this will be cool. Like yeah. you can go and, you know, uh, hang out in, in Europe with your mother. Yeah. Uh, my mother-in-law yeah. is, is leaving the country <laughs> <laughs> and I get to stay home and just sort of like tend to the home fires. But this like, you know, the pandemic basically, it, it swung my destiny full on in a different direction. And okay. I went with it. I went with it. So... Your wife was put on like a very classic expat package where you had a, a year or she had a year contract was I'm assuming giving like some sort of housing flight stipend that type of thing. And you were maybe given the option of being a trailing spouse, but you decided when the pandemic fully hit, you were like, I'm out. I never really considered it. I, I'm like, okay. I'm, I'm a financial advisor. I, I love to work with people like in person, one on one. Yeah. yeah. I was, you know, she asked me and I said, yeah, no, does my job yeah. look like portable? Right. Remember, there was a bunch of jobs right. that were not portable at all. Yeah. And, you know, Until that, now. that changed later on. Yeah. But I didn't ever want to come over. And she was like, kind of like your classic, like, well, you know, it would be a cultural experience for yeah. our children. And I could speak a different language for a while. Yeah. I wasn't caught up in that. <laughs> so. Okay. Yeah. So it sounds like as well, the kids moved with her, came to Portugal before you arrived, mm -hmm. and everybody was on board with the transition, or how did the kids feel? What were kind of some of the emotions that they were going through? You know, it's funny, Josh, with kids, like before the age of, of 10, I think, they basically just, uh, I mean, presuming you have a nice, happy, balanced household, they just go along. Yeah, um, with what it is that the family unit is doing, they trust. They yeah. trust. Yeah, and they Unless did you trust. Give them a reason not to trust. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, is, yeah. Is we had, a, I think, a pretty balanced uh, family dynamic, and so they just came with, 
Uh, we actually had already had them in, in some French classes uh, cool. before they came over. So the foreign language thing was not even a big hit for them. Right. So, you know, it was, it was totally fine. Yeah. And it was going to be an awesome adventure for just that year. Nice. It, and it ended up being an awesome adventure too. Uh, yeah. Ultimately. Okay. So when, when kind of everything hit the fan and you decided, all right, I'm going to Portugal, what were some things that you did to prepare for your move? I mean, your move was a little different than most people because you already had your spouse here. So what were some things that you had to do and um, what helped make it a reality? Well, I needed to buy a plane a ticket and mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I wasn't ready. I had actually packed up the house. Um, we, we owned a full home in San Francisco. And so I was like, I'm not going to live in a, a three-bedroom house by myself. If we can just rent it out, mm. right? So all of our stuff was already in storage. So that was already done. Um, but as far as the rest of our life, you know, I would love to be able to go back and, and plan a little better. Okay. But all things considered, it went smoothly. I didn't have to prepare that much. Nice. We had already kind of boarded up our, our life there and put it in mothballs for, for a one-year period. Okay. And so it was, you know, it's funny. Murray Conde says that if you don't need something for what, like six months, then you probably don't need it. Get rid of it. Yeah. yeah. And so yeah. everybody had kind of gotten ready to not need everything for a year. And so we didn't need to prepare that much. Okay. Once we got over here, we had jobs. Yeah. Right. Which yeah. is the stabilizing uh, factor. Yeah. That financial income rolling in. Yeah. Right. So we okay. had that. So you moved on a family reunification visa or something else? Yeah, yeah, it was it was family reunification. I mean, I, I've come to find out later since I, I now consult with expats that not yeah. everybody is as lucky as Abby was. My wife was lucky. She had a job lined up that needed her to be here. And so then she was employed by a Portuguese entity. So she had a sponsored work visa. Yep. And then I just reunified to her. Cool. Yeah, it was, it was pretty seamless, actually. The okay. attorney that had been... Uh, assigned to her was able to take me on and then uh, everything kind of worked. Okay. And did you move with the intention to stay in Portugal like medium or long term in mind or, or was it still like, okay, let's just see how the year goes and then we'll reassess things. Do you remember the pandemic? Like we were all trying to make plans for like this weekend. Like <laughs> <laughs> what is this all going to be over and we can just get back to our life. So I was always planning to go back. Okay. And that was a Bit of a contentious topic with my wife okay. because she was thinking like, well, hold on, like, do we really have to? And still remember, I'm the guy that's like, yes, like I, we built this this life up in yeah. San Francisco, California. So it was always going to go home. When did things shift? Because it, you, you've been here more than a year. Yeah, they shifted right at the last minute. Like okay. Right at the last minute. I was like, do you really want this? Like, this <laughs> is not what we all signed on to. You know, and, and she said very persuasively, honey, if you want to go home, there's the door. <laughs> <laughs> and she is a tough lady. I love her for this. And she was like, she was right. Like in our dynamic, I can really kind of assess the, the room because yeah. the kids are here. I'm thinking uh, we should stay. Yes, we should stay. And she was, she was right. So how long have you been in Portugal in total? Uh, it's coming on five years. Five years. Yeah. Okay. So thoughts of citizenship, what's that look like? Yeah. I mean, yeah. for sure. I mean, it's, it's kind of like, um, it's kind of like an investment that hasn't matured yet. Okay. And I'm in like five years. Yeah. So I've made this much of an investment. Like I'm going to have to do it. I'm going to, cause I would love to get the, um, the passport right? Okay. and, and have that optionality, uh, for life and for my children as well. What else does citizenship represent for you being an American that has moved to Portugal and, you know, being here for nearly five years and going to go through the citizenship process? What does it mean to you to end up becoming a citizen? And the reason I ask this is yeah. because Kaylee and I are uh, two years away from being eligible. There are plenty of people in our audience that are just starting out their journey, but more and more we hear of people that have the intention now to move here and in that five-year time span uh, work on citizenship. So do the language bit, stay here for five years, uh, keep keep your nose clean. Yeah. Um, people have that desire, but 
why is it a desire of yours? Or is it simply the passport? Well, I mean, in, in a bigger picture, I guess, like optionality is is always kind of in my mind. Okay. Like when, when I'm thinking about my business and what I'm doing with people, right. it's always talking about like give yourself a wider range of options mm. if you can. Yeah. And uh, I am at a point now where I can. So like why not just finish it out? And, okay. and, and there's not actually anything else in my mind than that. Like, okay. Well, I think my wife thinks that like the U.S. could uh, become less stable in the future. Sure. I am again, uh, <laughs> maybe I'm I'm a dummy, but I'm I'm an optimist, and I think that things get weird sometimes, but then they swing back the other direction. Yeah, the pendulum swings, doesn't it? But we also know this is 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 that she thinks differently than I do. Okay. And that's already been useful once, and so right. that could come in handy again. Right. She could be, I could be totally this wild eyed optimist and I could be made wrong. And so having another passport for another country, yeah, yeah, it it can't hurt. Yeah. It can't hurt. That that's my perspective. That's right. Yeah. What are some things that you've done um, financially, like as you plan to make your move? Because I mean, that's, that's what you do in your job. So what are some things that you did for you and your family to prepare for this move? Well, so I kept my insurance, you know, life insurance. Um, you're still covered um, as long as your your contract lasts. Um, okay. I kept the savings in the United States. I kept the investments and the same things uh, that they were already in. Um, I took a hard look at the budget and I made some like permanent cuts. Um, it was easier because are we talking about like subscriptions to Netflix or things like that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cause like, I don't know why, but like as the children were, were babies, I started subscribing to like everything in sight. And so I I know, I know. I'm like, do I, what do I need? Need, you know? And the pandemic kind of made that easier too. Yeah. Like I started like really looking at all of the things that we had been accumulating over little needs that became like, yeah, I don't know why we need four different streaming accounts. That's it. Like, do you really need them all? Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, those are just an example. I mean, we do have two cars now. I don't, I don't know that we need to have two vehicles. Okay. That's something I'm, I'm still like examining, but the, but the rest of the plan is, is more or less intact. And in fact, uh, having access to like U S financial services while you live here is sort of like a secret weapon. So, uh, I haven't had to look at much else. Okay. Um, did you have to do anything in terms of the address? Because sometimes the, the like mailing address or the residence can be a problem when you move abroad. Yeah. U.S. banks can get a little squirrely with that. They can. Brokerage in- institutions can get a little bit squirrely. Yeah. But um, there's lots of good services. I'm, okay. I'm using one that is a, uh, yeah, it's, it's a personal mailbox service. Okay. And they scan your email or they scan your, your mail. Your mail and then email. And it turns into email, basically. Okay. Like you feel Brilliant. like you can just hit delete on, <laughs> on, on trash mail. Yeah. And it's cool. I'm nice. like, this is actually better than just going... And getting mail. Physical mail, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah, except when you get like a credit card or something, but they can pass that along to you. Okay, so they have like a mail forwarding service. Yeah. Like Sweet. every piece of mail you get, you can right click on it and you can say, do you want to shred this piece? Do you want to have this mailed to you in Portugal? Brilliant. And it'll show up like six weeks later. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, so let's kind of zoom in on your current life here in Lisbon. You chose Lisbon back in 2019. 2019. I guess it was. Yeah. And, um, there's been a lot of changes to Lisbon. You have you have witnessed a rapid change, rapid uh, price increase, at least in the cost of housing. What's that been like? <sighs> That's a good question, Josh. I'm from San Francisco, okay, <laughs> and San Francisco. Preface, we were just talking everything. about this before, yeah. but like it is, it is like a bubble. Like yeah. if anybody thinks that it's not, like I'm sure that anybody that's watching your your show, they know it is. Like. And what was weird about SF was that there was a number of influences that came in from the outside and sort of have pressurized this place with money, Mm. right? And so we talk about this with my wife. I'm like, God, I hope that this doesn't happen here Mm. because unchecked uh, radical transformation of of a city, there's like people living in it, okay? And like these people have to deal with all of like... The things like they weren't used to the prices. They weren't used to all the other people. So it's definitely gotten different. It's more expensive. Like they um, are actually doing a lot of things right now to try to curb that. And with uh, varying levels of success, (laughs) I mean, so far, like the the jury is still out. 
um, the prices are going higher for real estate, especially. It's wild. What do you think some causes of that are? Do you think it's it's all of the Americans flocking to <laughs> Lisbon? No, I don't actually. And and I've actually studied this. It's it's just classic supply and demand. There's not enough supply. There wasn't before. Um, but now that there's a lot more capital coming to the country, um, it's not just outsiders, but it's also insiders that sure. have more money that That's are right. seeing like the investment opportunity. Yeah. And they're buying their own properties more so. Yeah. So you're seeing a lot of returning Portuguese or a lot of Portuguese that were just already here yeah. that are placing more, more investments in, in the country. And it's more, it's more internal investment, um, I'm told, than it is uh, external. Foreign investment. Yeah. I, That's what I've yeah. been told as well. Yeah. Which, which is a little counterintuitive, but I think it's because of, of the, the media noise. The media noise is that it's, it's a bunch of foreign investment, but in actuality, right. like when you dig into the numbers, it just seems like there are wealthier Portuguese people that are investing. Yeah, I mean, do you think the politicians um, have a story to tell? Sure. That they're, they're telling? As always. As always. As always. And sometimes the stories don't quite play out the way that they want them to. Sure. Like we're sitting here in like the week after the prime minister um, was was forcibly removed from his office, mm. <laughs> you know, and, and some of the, uh, the political messaging around this um, has been pretty uh, critical mm. um, of outsiders. And they would not be the first country uh, to, 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 to do this. Uh, sure. Politicians do need uh, to kind of find villains and find ways to solve problems now. Yeah. And I feel like that's part of what's happened. Some of it may be earned yeah. completely, but what, I don't know. What do you think about the climate right now here in Lisbon in terms of how foreigners are being treated by Portuguese? Mm. Well, Has it changed? I don't think it's changed. I think Portuguese think? people are super friendly. Yeah, uh, I don't no, think it's changed. I think there's a lot of online noise. Um, I haven't personally experienced this in, in, in Porto, but I think there's an online noise about maybe anti-American or anti-foreigner sentiment. Yeah. But I haven't like lived that out. I haven't experienced that. I don't know anyone who has. But it could also be because in the North, people are like extremely nice and hospitable. Whereas whenever I travel to Lisbon, I don't get that yeah. same warmth that I, that I get up there. Um, I, yeah, I want your take on it, really. Yeah, you're just trying to get your neighbors to love you. No, 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 no. That's not it. Look, <laughs> if if that was the case, time. I'd be wearing my my Porto jersey <laughs> yeah, right now. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I I'm 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 sure that you're gonna get sick of hearing this, but I'm from a city, and I think that there's a very urban San Francisco, vibe. right? Right. <laughs> I think. <laughs> Yeah, there's a vibe. Like yeah. even if you're actually there's there's some American cities like um, I'm looking at you, Chicago, like beautiful cities where people still feel Midwestern and like warm. Uh, okay, <laughs> but like L.A., like San Francisco, New York City, come on, yeah, like it, people just there. There's too many of us. Yeah, so like you can't be that, you know, uh, natural with everybody. Yeah, there's too many people you're walking on walking by in the street. So that's, that's the vibe that's I get. Is. That's exactly the vibe I get. There's, it's not this like anti-foreigner thing. It's just this kind of like big city culture. Like sure. I've seen a million of you uh, today <laughs> <laughs> walking by. So I lived in Iowa for like 14 years. And in Iowa, like you meet a person and that might be like one of a dozen people that you're going to meet today. And you're like, hey, how's it going? Like you, right. you wave to them and you come up and hey, how's it going? I'm John. Like, are you lost? Like, no way. Here, there are like hundreds of thousands of people around you. Yeah. That's all it is. Yeah. That's, I think that's it. Do you think that Lisbon is, is right for the masses or a specific type of person should consider Lisbon and a specific type of person should not move to Lisbon? I have met these people that are not for Lisbon. Tell and, me. Uh, yeah. These people will tell you what you just told me, but they mm. will say, yeah, people aren't nice. Uh, frankly, uh, the, the drivers are crazy, <laughs> right? Like, it's loud, super loud. My neighbors are just, like, always partying. Like, they're just not used to living in a big city. Yeah. So if you haven't been living in a big city, I would question your sanity <laughs> yeah. coming here. Why are you putting yourself up to this? Because it's expensive. And uh, again, why? Like, what's the point? Yeah. Versus um, if you're from a city 
and you really need that 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 vibe, that energy. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. met a guy who's from New York City. He was saying that Lisbon was like way too slow, and he was not like it wasn't because he was young. Like this mm. guy was literally like fifty, late fifties, early sixties. So actually, pretty young still. But he was like, it's, it feels like I might get bored because there's not enough to keep me uh, excited. So, so then he shouldn't choose Portugal, period. No, that's yeah, what I it's said. Gotta, it's got to like, be like London or right. Paris, maybe. Yeah. Berlin, I don't know. I yeah. even made the argument. I'm like, can you just hang around for a minute? Because, yeah. you know, it can get exciting It'll at shift. times. Yeah. But you could also live here from a financial planner's perspective because yeah. it's less expensive. And you can take a, an easy jet up to the, you know, to the bigger Air, cities, yeah. Up in, and see that in London. I'm glad that you brought that up about uh, the, the cost of living. Tell me about it. Can you? Can you share a bit on on your cost of living and maybe some some changes that you've seen over the past four plus years? Um, housing, the rent, Josh, housing is costs too damn high. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember that meme a couple of years ago? <laughs> it, it's higher. Like the rents have moved higher yeah. astronomically. Yeah. Rents are high, but everything else is like so tame. And, yeah. and I know this because I'm always doing these cost of living analysis mm. for people. Okay. And I'm tracking it, man. Yeah. Like you can get a coffee for a dollar still. Yeah. Like a dollar is a lot less than you would pay someplace else for a coffee. Yeah. But the rent is still pretty high. So rents and, and housing prices are of like a hundred to, to 150% um, of like the global average, I yeah. would say. Yeah. And, and food, and, and like by far, it's food. Like food prices are, are far lower. Yeah. I, I go back and forth to uh, Seattle, San Francisco, and here, and in a day, I'll be at like Trader Joe's and just trying to get my last few snacks because they do great snacks. Yeah. They do great snacks. <laughs> <laughs> you can get like some amazing things in the US yeah. that you can't get here. Yeah. But like the price tag is, is shocking. And you get yeah. back here and you go down to, you know, mini presso or pingo dos or something. Yeah. And you're like, that's $40 worth that's it? of groceries. Yeah. No, like yeah. that you can get a, a like That's what bags. I mean. Like yeah. it only costs this much and I get all this. Yeah. 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 Uh, what about utilities? Uh, how do you find utility costs, whether it be water, electric, uh, internet, TV packages? I'm confused on that one. You okay. would think it would be higher. Okay. But I don't know if I'm just, uh, no, my, my home is not energy uh, efficient. Okay. Um, but my bills are not very high. Okay. <laughs> I could put a price tag on it because maybe they'll seem relatively high. <laughs> but they're like still half of what I was paying in the United States. Okay. So those those are the type of costs that you're cutting by being here. Mm -hmm. Maybe not on the housing side, but like basically everything else. Basically everything else. Yeah. Transportation-wise, you have a car. You have two. Yeah. Uh, so what's that like, uh, car ownership here? Uh, so yeah, actually you just put your finger on it. Uh, gas prices are insane. Yeah. They're, they're just wild. Like, but compared you know, to the States, compared for sure. to the States, We're the States looking has at like, easy access to its own supply of oil. Yeah. And so that has dramatically reduced the price in the United States. I fill up my tank and it's more than a hundred euros. Whoa. That's how often like do you fill up your tank though? Not often at all. Yeah. <laughs> like once a month. Once a month. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So yeah. I, okay. I can, yeah, and, and the rest of the costs of ownership are also pretty much the same. Um, okay. In terms of insurance and... Insurance and is way less, actually. Okay. Car yeah. registration. Car registration, car insurance, it's all less money. Yeah. Okay. Pretty simple process to get a car registered here? Yeah, I thought. Okay. I thought. But then you do need to speak some Portuguese if you okay. want to go to the right... rent. Uh, the right. Uh, what do we use? Yeah, we use double ACP, and that is the uh, insurance agent. Okay. Um, they they didn't speak English at my office, so. Okay. But would you get a fixer for that? Someone who who could help do the translation work, or would you just recommend people give it a go themselves? Maybe try to find the English speaking person in the office. Yeah, that's probably the best bet because there almost is always some somebody with an earshot, yeah. even if the person you're talking to doesn't speak uh, English. And I speak pretty good Portuguese. Now. I think so. Yeah. So I've heard you. so I I, I like. That, that's what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to integrate so that I can like not be that ugly American and I want to yeah. be able to interface without worrying yeah. like I, I did in the early days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about Portuguese. What have you done to learn Portuguese language? Um, how much do you practice or study? I've worked a lot. 
that. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's going to be a very unpopular thing to say. Okay. I've worked just so much. Um, I just basically pretend that like I'm living my, my normal life, but like I try to do it all in Portuguese. Okay. So I wake up and I turn on the radio and listen to the morning zoo crew, you know, I talk about whatever, yeah. you know, and they're, you know, completamente português. Sem por cento português. Deste piada aqui e outros. Like, I'm, I'm like listening to them just, I'm, I'm trying to live my life in Portuguese. Yeah. Watching okay. the news in Portuguese, reading my news in Portuguese. I study the stock market sometimes in Portuguese. Not usually. <laughs> which which stock down. market? Uh, our stock market. Okay, okay. You know, like the, the one that everybody writes about all the time. Because <laughs> they will. <laughs> they will they, so you're finding a lot of... I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, it, like okay. the wild thing, and a Portuguese friend of mine pointed this out the other day, their news is is totally wrapped up in our news. Like sure. they find the U.S. totally fascinating. Yeah, I mean, not fascinating. Like they just they have to know about it. Uh, really, it's a practical consideration. Like, yeah. So they follow it. So the S and P five hundred, they'll talk about it every day. And like I can go and I can consume the daily business news in Portuguese. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Because you might as well. Like that's the track that your brain's on, anyways. Sure. So I'm not going to force it into like class mode. I like to talk about how to. You know, buy uh, groceries. It's useful, but it's not what I think about like throughout the day. So it seems like that's really helped with your adaptation here. You're learning the language. You're certainly learning the culture through the media you're consuming. How about the the kids and your wife? How's how's their level of Portuguese? How's everybody feeling now, four plus years into living here in Portugal? You know, again, and and you said this. They're so friendly. Like, I have found, like, the Portuguese people that I have, like, lived among to be some of the most welcoming, like, just warm people. And so that's the the social environment. It's just been so nice. So they're all they're all good. Like, they, they're feeling so happy. Uh, and that was actually one of the biggest uh, topics of conversation as we were deciding to stay. So, like, I could see my children... Uh, sort of feeling comfortable in a way that they didn't back at home. And that, okay. that makes me feel kind of sad. But I lived in a big city before. Lisbon's like a medium-sized city. And they could walk to school. And, like, they have smaller class sizes. And they play at the park. And I don't have to, like, you know, hover by them all the time. So happy. Like, they're super happy. Nice. Nice, man. Yeah. At Expats Everywhere, we believe that living abroad transforms lives. How has living abroad transformed your life? <laughs> I took a customer service call in, in the car yesterday and I forgot to turn the Bluetooth off. And my son was like, my God, that accent. And I was like, what do you mean? And he's like, she sounded like one of Santa Claus's elves. And it was somebody <laughs> that had a really like deep Midwestern Southern accent. Yeah. And I was like, that's a transformative thing. Like America mm. looks different for these guys. Yeah. But yet they can comfortably move about the, the country there. And it's, it's that, like, they're like really unaware of the extent of their, their, they're very broad minded. Yeah. And I wasn't when I was that age. Right. Nice. Like, cause I was pure American, which is cool, but that's, that's a transformative effect. Like, we, yeah. So yeah. you're influencing your kids through having this experience with them and allowing them to be transformed by it. They speak three languages. Did you speak three languages when you were 10? I hardly speak I one. I hardly spoke one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, you know, I, I was watching Scooby-Doo and hanging out in, a, in the United States. I, yeah. So, so that's like good, I think. Absolutely. Like for people to be more uh, adaptive and open. Nice. Yeah, that's, that's transformation for sure. If you want to learn more about living in Portugal through another interview, check this interview out right here. Now, let's get moving. Bye.